गुड डे एवरी वन सो वेलकम टू द कोर्स ऑन कंप्यूटर ऑर्गेनाइजेशन एंड आर्किटेक्चर दिस कोर्स इज डिजाइन फॉर अंडर ग्रेड स्टूडेंट हु आर न्यू टू टू द कंप्यूटर ऑर्गेनाइजेशन एंड आर्किटेक्चर वर्ल्ड सो टूडे इज द फर्स्ट लेक्चर ऑफ द कोर्स and in this lecture our aim is to familiarize you with the contents of the course and why we need to go through this course computer organization and architecture what is the need of this course and what are the objectives course objectives that we are going to achieve and what will be the structure of the course so this is what we are going to address in this particular lecture and at the end i will present the complete structure of the entire course so let's start the the lecture the first thing that we have to understand is that for example you have gone through the computer programming course you may have gone everyone who is learning computer organization or architecture he may have clearly done the computer programming course and in the computer programming you may have chosen some language some programming language for example c java python or any other language and using that language you are writing programs and those programs are used to achieve some objective okay so in your c programming you were considering your oh sorry in your computer programming you were considering your programming language as a model of computation okay and this computer programming we can say it is the programmer's view of a computer system this is how programmer views the computer system for a com programmer a computer system is a kind where we write a program and that computer system will execute our program okay so we can also say this is the software view of a computer program and likewise we have we may have gone through you may have gone through the digital logic course what we are doing in digital logic in digital logic for any computation we view this digital logic as a model of computation we connect the gates with each other to perform some particular function okay so we can say the digital logic is the hardware designer's view of a computer system actually what we want to achieve basically the main aim what is happening in the computer domain is the programmers right the program and finally we have to execute that program using the digital logic or we can say we have a program and we have to execute this particular program using the logic gates how can we run this computer program on a logic gate okay this will be the main objective of this course how we can use the digital logic digital logic to execute the programs in higher level language so what whatever is in between the computer program and the digital logic this will be the main 
focus of this course. There are many different layers in this midway. So in this middle one, what we what we have to discuss is how we convert this higher level program into a set of instructions such that that set of instruction can be executed on a digital logic. And this middle portion which lies between the software view and the hardware view. This is, we call the architect's view. Okay. And how to design a computer that meets system goals. This comes under the middle view. And the choices that we made in, in between these layers, in between the software layer and the hardware layer that critically affect both the software programmer and the hardware designer. If the computer programmer knows the actual architecture or actual working of these layers, which lies between the computer programming layer and the digital logic layer, he will be able to efficiently write it as computer program. And one of the layer in, in this middle is the system software layer. And the two important system softwares are the operating system and compiler. So the operating system won't be the main focus of this course. So let's leave it here. Let's see about the compiler. What is the functionality of this compiler? Basically, you may have seen in your previous courses that a compiler is a software that converts a higher level language into machine level language. So before understanding this, converting higher level into machine level, we will come back to this. Let's first see what, what is the meaning of this machine language. Okay, then we will uh, briefly discuss about the functionality of a compiler. So on the top, we can say we have we have a high level program and below it, we have a digital logic. Basically, this digital logic, it comprises of gates which are connected to each other. And we know these gates, they understand only zeros and ones binary. Okay. So before discussing this, digital logic circuit one thing that we have to understand as that is that whenever we want to design some circuit for example i want to design a circuit okay but before designing a circuit i have to define the objectives that i want to achieve using this circuit or we can say that i i have to define the functionalities that my circuit should achieve. What type of functionality should the circuit achieve? For example, if I want to design a circuit for adder, so I should design the circuit in such a way that I will define what will be the input of the circuit and what should be the output. Okay. And input, what will be the input? Basically input to a circuit is a stream of stream of ones and zeros. Okay, so every circuit takes a stream of ones and zeros and based on the pattern of ones and zeros in a string, it produces an output. So we have a logic circuit. It takes input, a binary stream and it gives us some output. 
okay so we have to before designing a logic circuit we have to define these binary streams what kind of binary streams should our logic circuit expect and what will what should be the output this binary streams we call these binary streams as machine instructions okay so we give machine instructions to the logic circuit and based on the type of instruction it gives us the output so for every logic we have a set of instructions and this set of instructions it takes as an input and based on the type of instruction it provides us the output we can also say that this set of instructions will define the functionality of our logic circuit okay so first of all for designing a circuit we have to define the functionalities that we want to achieve using our circuit so the first thing the when we are designing a circuit is to define the functionality or we can say define the set of instructions so when we define this set of instructions okay so up to this point we are not designing anything we are simply it is our software approach to see what should our circuit perform how it should work what kind of input it should take and what should be the expected output so after defining this set of instructions we design a circuit or we can say we design a digital logic or in other terms we say we design a chip this a, uh, we can say layman term design a chip so this chip in uh, when we progress through the course we will not use the chip word we will use some other for example cores or processor or pipeline so this chip this digital logic this chip has a set of instructions and this chip can only understand this set of instructions and nothing else okay if we want to achieve any functionality using this chip we have to write a code based on these instructions okay for example i want to search an element in an array okay so i have to write a program but that program should have instructions which belong to the set of instructions which this chip is understand okay then only it will be able to search an element in a string so if i give some other instruction which is not in its set some other instruction if i give that input to the chip it will not provide the desired output so in our program all the instructions should belong to this set of instructions based on which we have designed the chip okay so for designing any chip for designing any logic what is the first thing the first thing is to define functionalities that means define the set of instructions after defining the set of instructions second thing is to design the design the actual circuit or in other words we can say when i have the set of instructions ready that i want my logic to execute i have to implement 
implement this in logic implement set of instructions in logic that means design a circuit that should be able to execute these instructions okay so this set of instructions this set of instructions we call this set as instruction set architecture isa the set of instructions is the isa of a chip instruction set architecture of a chip or instruction set architecture of a processor and this actual implementation the actual implementation of the set of instructions this actual implementation is called organization or we can say micro architecture so instruction set architecture is the set of instructions set of instructions that we want our circuit to execute and the actual implementation of these set of instructions in logic is called the organization or micro architecture so i hope up to this point you are you are with me you understand the term instruction set architecture and organization or micro architecture of a processor so every processor before designing a processor we have processor is a digital logic circuit okay so before defining a processor we have to define the instruction set architecture the instruction is that we want our digital logic to execute after defining the instruction set architecture we implement that instruction set architecture using the hardware and this hardware implementation of an isa is called the micro architecture of that particular isa and this isa in computer terminology is also called architecture okay so let's go back to our first discussion what was the discussion we have we have a program and we want to execute that program on a logic digital logic but we know when we have a digital logic we have designed this digital logic after defining the isa so we have these set of instructions and this digital logic is will be able to execute these set of instructions isas and this set of instruction is basically it is the binary instructions these are the binary instructions which we also called the machine instructions machine instructions of this particular machine okay so we have a program and i want want to execute this program on this digital logic okay so how i will execute this i will take a compiler i will design a compiler for this particular isa okay what will be the functionality of this compiler it takes this higher level program in as input and in the output it produces the instructions which are in the instruction set architecture of this digital logic so it produces a produced a program new program which contained only those instructions which this logic can execute okay after giving this instruction set or after giving this machine code as an output we can directly implement this we can directly execute this on the digital logic okay so we can say the isa or architecture it acts as an interface between the hardware between the software or 
programmer between the software and hardware. So ISA acts as an interface between the hardware and the software. So what we saw that we for every digital logic or for every circuit or for every processor we have an ISA in a instruction set architecture or we can say we have an architecture and this processor can execute in instructions which are in its ISA. Okay, and this implementation of an ISA, this processor implementation, actual implementation of an ISA, this is called the micro architecture. Okay, and in this ISA, we have what we have the set of instructions. And these instructions are binary instructions. But we know that to memorize binary instructions is very difficult. So in most of the languages, these binary in most of the ISAs, they are not written as simply as binary instructions, but each binary instruction is given a symbolic notation. Symbolic notation which can be memorized easily. Okay, and the symbolic notation of a binary instruction or a machine instruction that is called assembly instruction. Okay, so instead of directly representing ISA as the binary instructions, we represent them in terms of assembly instructions. For example, there may be some ISA which has, let's say, 20 instructions. So all instructions will be represented in the data sheet in terms of assembly instructions. So between every assembly instruction, between an assembly instruction and binary instruction, there is a one to one mapping. Every assembly instruction maps to one binary instruction. But the similar case is not with the high level instruction. This case is not with the high level instruction. Every high level instruction may result in two or more binary instructions. So, but for assembly.